here's a question for you. What's the number one play object that is mobile and has stood the test of time? It's a ball. And we've been playing with balls throughout history. Balls date back to forever ago, at least 5,000 years and probably even longer. And the reason it stood the test of time is because it's not just a physical social play object, but it's transcended into the digital realm as well. We can see its evolution through some of my favorite, the pinball machine, the first combination of blending the physical and digital ball. Two more recent mixed reality balls, like Spiro's BB-8 droid, or the more recent trainer ball, an actual physical ball you can throw at your digital Pokemon. And I'd be remiss in not mentioning Pong, the first video arcade game using purely a digital ball. Civilization has been finding creative ways to have prolonged, repeated interactions with a ball. So whether you kick it, hit it, pitch it, dribble it, throw it, or use one of these to control it, the ball is a common denominator in play. Now, I can sit here and play by myself, but it gets really interesting when I have a play partner. The way I define play is the ability to experiment with your surroundings as a form of problem solving. And when the pandemic shut the world down, what rose from its ashes is a digital first acceleration, where in a contactless world, interactions are virtual, content is on demand and converging across platforms, opening up doors for new opportunities to prosper. And I think back on what actually mattered and realize the clever ways we created new forms of play that moved us into a new economy, an economy driven by this. We use this to play, to connect with others, and to help us solve our problems. So is this now the number one play object? Well, like a ball, we can have repeated prolonged interactions with it and we definitely use it to collaborate with others. It transcends the effective, transient, physical, and permanent play spaces. It is play integrated into our daily human practice. There are three ways that play fundamentally manifests itself through mobile as an action and not just the object in hand. Mobile has both adults and children perform. So whether it was parents impersonating their kids, to learning the latest dance moves, to laughing at the corny revival of Twilight, we all use the mobile device to perform. Even performers who actually had other venues previous moved to the mobile device to collaborate with others. For example, in 2020, over a couple of months, Fans to out-of-work creators came together to perform Ratatouille, devising musical numbers and songs and even a fake playbill. So when Broadway went dark, TikTok took center stage and Ratatouille the musical raised over a million dollars for the Actors Fund. Mobile as performance is an alternative to theater now and into the future. After all, the show must go on. It also became our sous chef, assisting us with finding a patio where we unlocked a restaurant menu's QR code to recreating date night by ordering that online meal kit. Or perhaps you had groceries delivered to your door. In fact, Mintel's COVID-19 food and tracker reporter claimed 68% of consumers are eating more at home than ever before. So from chefs to online food groups, we are live streaming our cooking tips and sharing our recipes. With the rise of the quarantine cooks, the kitchen has renewed itself as the permanent play space for both families and individuals to experiment, to explore their imaginations, and to gain confidence in their new cooking skills. The kitchen is an example of how people have found creative ways to entertain themselves when many of our other activities are postponed or closed down. But as the world opens up, 
restaurants will need to think more than just being the convenience of eating out. In fact, they will need to become an effective play space, offering a meaningful experience with a particular mood. Now, there's another way I think about play, and that is play as an acronym, Participatory Learning and You. And the college campus is one of the most important experiences for students today. In fact, before the pandemic, the University of Texas at Austin had over 70,000 visitors visit the campus per year. So what happens when a student wants to connect with others but can't come to campus? This is a question I've been working with UT Welcome Center on in order to design a new experience for prospective students to imagine their lives on the 40 acres. We call it the Be a Longhorn campaign. This is an augmented reality experience where whether you're at home or walking along the speedway, Bevo and his friends introduce you to the Longhorn traditions. So take a look. There we go. Well, hey there, partner. My name's Bevo, and welcome to UT Austin. Come with me and I'll show you around. Tap on any of the buildings to discover more about UT Austin. So until we're able to return to campus, extended reality is a way for you to connect with your community. The mobile device has encouraged unconventional approaches to problems that have arisen, and it has given way to embodying play with a new sense of agency. Throughout the pandemic, it captured historical events, giving rise to a new act of social media activism that I haven't seen since Arab Spring used the hashtag as an action of change. So what's next for the future of play? Well, if I looked into my crystal ball, I see mobile as an action and not just the object in your hand. Hyper-personalization, location-based experiences, a seamless blend of physical and digital arenas are all ripe with possibilities to incorporate play. So as you travel into this new post-pandemic world, how will you play? Thank you. <laughs>